Electrical resistance in a conductor can also be calculated based on circular mills and length in feet. In this video, I'll walk you through the concept and I'll do a sample calculation. The good news is about this calculation is that it doesn't involve numbers in scientific notation. There is no n powers of 10 with a negative exponent. That's a huge plus, okay? On the downside, circular mills is a strange thing and length, in f length and measuring length in feet is antiquated and none of this is compatible with metric whatever. The, uh, the, the, the calculations, uh, the formula is essentially the same as, in the, uh, as with the metric calculations. I'll show you side by side here. So the resistance is calculated by multiplying a k number with the length in feet and dividing by circular mills area. CMA is, stands for circular mills area, CM, whatever, same thing, circular mills, you know, the area. The length in feet is just length in feet, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing much I want to add to it. When this K number, the K stands for a constant. In the metric counterpart of this formula, that was a rho, a Greek letter rho there, and there is length and there is area. That one's meters, that one's square meters, and this one is ohm meters. Very straightforward. This one is uh, circular mills is based on inches, that's feet, and that k number, that constant, that's similar to this rho, is number of ohms in a mill foot of wire. Remember that a mill foot is a conductor, and this is just for show and tell, a conductor with a cross-sectional area of one circular mill, which also means that its diameter is one mill, because one by one is one, its cross-sectional area is one circular mill as well, and is one foot long. Okay, so that's one, uh, one mill foot. And a K number is based on that. It's K, it's, it, it's K stands for constant. It's not C because C was taken for circumference and coulombs and whatever. So we are going with K. R this K is also called resistivity in this metric calculation here. But uh, in this case, it's also called specific resistance. Okay. And you can see these specific resistance figures for various metals here. Uh, that's a that's a row, but in this font it kind of looks like a Latin lowercase p, whatever. That's a Greek letter row. Uh, that would be room temperature there, obviously, 75 Fahrenheit. And uh, oft, one number that's often featured is this 10.4, because that's... Uh, annealed copper wire, uh, it, the, the K number or rho number, depending on how you want to abbreviate these things. It's the same thing. Here's another table, and in this one, it's K number. Okay? This is from some apprenticeship, whatever, book. So, different sources. Here, it's, it's listed with a K. There's copper, 10.4 same idea for uh, for uh, for uh, the same materials okay and uh, how it works is really really straightforward say you have a length of materials how about uh, oh we're working with copper wire how about uh, I'll write it here so copper wire and it's uh, how about gauge number two? And its length is 500 feet. Okay. How about that? The question is, how much is the resistance of gauge number two, 500 foot long copper wire? Super straightforward. You don't have to measure. You have to look up stuff for this one. Here is copper wire, gauge, circular, mills, electrical resistance, and weight, and this one, but we're just going to look up here is gauge, gauge number two, 
here is its uh, diameter, it doesn't matter, but here is its area in circular mirrors, 66,400. So the resistance will be calculated. The uh, circular mirror number was 66,400. And we've got length there, so that's going to be 500 feet. And the K number for copper, it was 10.4. Okay, and just multiply everything together, and we're jolly good. 500, and then a division, division times 10.4, divided by 66,400 equals there, not many ohms. Okay, and that's 0 0.078. Let me round it up to 0 0.08 ohms, okay? So there's your resistance, 0 0.08 ohms. End of calculation, that's how it looks like. It's pretty straightforward in terms of math.